Vavam at base will begin Vavam and all of three lines from the bottom at the two dots. So we brought down before the Gemara brought down the Brisa that identified the different Rishuyas, like Abba Hilcha Shabbos. What is a Rishul Sayyachid? It gave examples of a ditch that's 10 deep and four has four Tvachim by four Tvachim, or a wall at the top of a wall that has those dimensions. So it says that the, in the Brisa, it says, Vizuhi Rishus HaYochid Gemura. That these, this is considered a Zuhi Rishus HaYochid Gemura. So what is meant by this? Why does the Brisa stress that this is a Rishus HaYochid and this is Gemura, it's complete. Amar Mar, Zuhi Rishus HaYochid, this is a Rishus HaYochid. We're identifying that this is an Arab Rishus HaYochid. What is it coming to exclude? It's coming to exclude Rav Yehuda's case, a case Rav Yehuda brings down, which he considers it to be a Rishul Seyachid, but the Tana of the Brisa says, no, that's not a Rishul Seyachid. What we identified in the Brisa, that's a Rishul Seyachid. But the case of Rav Yehuda is not a Rishul Seyachid. Rav Yehuda said even more than the case that was discussed before which we won't elaborate now, but it has to do with good asik mechitza. In addition to that, if a person has on the side of the Rishul Sarabim, he has a house on either side. So there's a house. Now the house has, has a wall. There's the, the wall of the, of the house. So therefore he has the street in the middle and he has houses on each side. So effectively he has two mechitzas. He has two walls. So Rabbi Huda says, Rabbi Huda holds that two walls is enough to be a Rishul Sayyach and Midaraisa. So therefore he says, Mishi Yesh Lebeis Bat Mishnei Tzir Rishul Sarabim, Oysa Lechi Mikan, Velechi Mikan, he makes really Midaraisa, it's a Rishul Sayyach, but Midarabon, and he has to have an identifying marker to differentiate between the street and between the area that's enclosed. So he puts a lechi, a post, on each side that's open to the Rishul Sarabim, or a kaira, a cross beam, a, a beam on top, either a cross beam, or he puts a post on each end of it that will now differentiate between the enclosed area and the open area, just to make a marker. Just to make a simon. He makes a lechemikan, a lechemikan, a karmikan, a karmikan, a nice and nice and bamsa. And then he can carry in the middle because he holds that two mechitzas are midaraisa of Rishus HaYochid. Midarabonan, there's a requirement for a lechir kaira. And now he can carry in between. You cannot make an Arab in this manner in a Rishus Arabim because they hold that this area, two machitzas, is not enough to be a Rishus Yachid. So the Arab would not be sufficient. If you have an area which is enclosed, then the requirement for Lechi Akara, the post or the cross beam, will now allow you to carry Lecharchila, even Mirabana you can carry. But if you only have two walls, two machitzas, two mechitzas are not considered an enclosed area, midaraisa, it's not a Rishul Sayyachit, so the era will not help. The era will only help if you have an enclosed area. So, Amrloyin, Ma'am Rishul Saram So therefore, it says this, in the Bryce it says, the enclosed areas that we've identified. If you have the ditch or the top of the wall, those, that's a Rishul Sayyachit. But Rabbi Huda's case, where you only have two mechitzas, is not a Rishul Sayyachin. But my Korele Gemura, now why does it say this is a Gemura, a Rishul Sayyachin Gemura? What does it mean to indicate by saying complete? What's the addition of Gemura? What does it want to indicate by saying it's complete? But my Karla Gemura Mao, the same a complete Rabbana letter of Yehuda Loi Havar Rishul Sayyachid. You might have thought that where did the Rabbana argue on Rav Yehuda and say it's not a Rishul Sayyachid on Milatalta? That's only to permit caring of a Lizraik Moidilei. But you might think that they really hold Midarais it is a Rishul Sayyachid. And therefore, if a person threw something, an object from the street, and 
from the Rosh Hashanah and it landed in this area between the two houses, you might have thought that he's high. Because you might have thought that Rabbana also agree that two mechitzas, midar raisa, constitute a rishus hayachid. But you might have said that they argue, where are they arguing? Only the heter to permit caring within that area. You might have said that the Rabbana also agree that two mechitzas are, that constitutes a rishus hayachid. But they say, we do not allow you to carry in that enclosed area to carry in that area because it looks like a Rishul Sarabim. It might get confused with a Rishul Sarabim and you can't carry. But if someone threw from the open area, from the street, into that enclosed area, perhaps you would have said, they also agree he's high because it's a Rishul Sayyachid Daraisa. It's only Midrabana that they argue. Kamash Milan, they're saying no. This is a Rishul Sayyachid which is enclosed. Gemur, which is enclosed. But Two houses, two mechitzas is not considered enclosed. It's not an enclosed area. So there's no chi of the rice at all. It's not considered a rishus yachid because it's not enclosed. There is a machlok is rishonim. What does it mean that to be a rishus yachid has to be enclosed? The Ram Shita is, is that to be a rishus yachid it has to have mechitzas on four sides. It has to have four mechitzas. It has to be enclosed. But for the fourth wall, a lachir kair suffices. Most Rishonim learn that enclosed means three. Three walls is enough to create a Rishos Hayach and Midaraisa. Midaraisa, even three, is considered enclosed. But in any event, they hold, or Chom hold, that two Mechitzas is certainly not an enclosure. It's not a Rishos Hayach. So the Brysa similarly identified a Rishus Rabin. And it said, this is a Rishus Rabin. Zuhi Rishus Rabin Gimur. So same type of uh, analysis and discussion we're going to have. What does the Tana mean to say, identify this is a Rishus Rabin, as opposed to what? What is not a Rishus Rabin? So the Gemara says, Amar Mar Zoin Rishus Ram Limute Mai Limute Idach the Rav Yehuda. It wants to now exclude a different case of Rav Yehuda, where Rav Yehuda said that a certain area which is partially enclosed is a Rishus Rabim, and you can't carry within that area. And the Rabbanon say that no, that that area under discussion, which we'll illustrate in a moment that that is not a Rishul Sarab, meaning what we have identified in the Brysa, what the Brysa identified as a Rishul Sarabim, it says in the case of Sratiu, Plata, Plachin, Gedele, Mavu, Samafuloshim, Highways, etc., an open street, that is a Rishul Sarab. But this area, this Machloik, is over here, the case that Rav Yehuda brought down, is not a Rishul Sarab. And what is that case? This non Rabbi Yehuda Oimer Im Hoysa Derech Rishus Rabbi Mavsa Kosa and Yisal Kenal Itzrodim. The case the point in, in the under discussion over here is when the Oil Regolim, the people used to travel for the Regal to Yerushalayim. So they traveled great distances and they had to sometimes camp on Shabbos. And on Shabbos they camped and they camped near a well to have a source of water. Now the well was typically a Rishul Sayyachid. It was 10 or more Tfachim deep and more than Dalat al Dalat Tfachim, the length of the width. So it had a din of a Rishul Sayyachid. Now they wanted to be able to draw the water from the well on Shabbos for further needs. They were camped on the roadside. The road is the highway, the road is considered to be a Rishul Sarabim. They can't draw the water from a Rishul Sayyachid to the Rishul Sarabim. So they had to create a makeshift Rishul Sayyachid. Now the Chum were makal on them and did not require them to make full mechitzas. They permitted a kula that they can make partial mechitzas and that would be sufficient. So what are these partial mechitzas? So just to illustrate, if they had the area where there was a, a well, now they're on the, the roadway was, we're on the highway and there was this well, to draw the water from the well and draw it to the road would be carrying from Rishus Harabim to Rishus Hayachid rather to the Rishus Harabim. So they permitted making these posts 
which were an ama by ama and at right angles. So they had the beginning of a mechitza on this side and on that side. And they did this on the four corners. On the four corners, they did it this way. So they had these posts, these diumdin. And as long as the space between each side was less than 10 amas, was not more than 10 amas, then we would consider it enclosed all around. Even though they weren't full mechitzas, they only had the posts on each side, but as long as, as, long as the, the gap between the dumdim was not more than 10 amas, it's considered completely enclosed, and therefore it's drawing water from a Rishusei to a Rishusei The Rabbanan said that this is mut. We consider this to be a Rishusei Yochid, not a Rishusei Rader. Rav Yehuda says, no, the traffic that passes through these areas is mevatal the Mechitzas, it nullifies the Mechitzas, and it's considered to be a Rishusei Rader. So he would be considered drawing water from the Rishul Sayyachit to the Rishul Sarabit. And therefore they hold that, uh, the Rabbi Huda holds rather, that this is a Rishul Sarabim. The Chachamim, however, say, no, that's not a Rishul Sarabim. See, the point in the Baris over here is to say, what we've identified as a Rishul Sarabim, the highways, etc., the, the platya, the squares, the market, those are Rishul Sarabim. But Rabbi Huda's case, where the traffic passes through these posts, through these dumdim, that is not considered to be a Rishul Sarabim, that is a Rishul Sarabim. So again, Rabbi Yehuda says, it's not Rabbi Yehuda, Oimer, im if the traffic is now passing through these posts, these jumdim, you have to divert the traffic to the side because otherwise it'll be mevatal, otherwise it'll nullify the mechitzas. No, ain't it It's not required because even though there's traffic passing through, it's still considered a Rishul Sayyach, not a Rishul Sarabim. Rashi points out that it seems to be that, and the Gemara Arab then asks this question, it, the Shittas of Rabbi Yehuda and Chum seem to be the opposite of what they said before. Previously, you said Rabbi Yehuda says if you have two mechitzes, two walls, that's a Rishus, that's a Rishus Hayachin. And even though the traffic passes between the houses, it's still a Rishus Hayachin. The Chum say, no, that's not a Rishus Hayachin, that's a Rishus Ram. Now, here we're saying you have the posts at right angles. And we're saying that the Chom say, even though the traffic passes through, it's still considered a Rishul Sayyachin. And Rabbi Yehuda says the public nullifies those Mechitzas. The Gemara answers is that the difference is, is because over there by the houses, you have full Mechitzas, not just Jumdim, not just posts, which are Ama by Ama. You have full Mechitzas. Over here, you have only partial Mechitzas, only a post, but you have four. So there's a mila and a chasorin in each case. In the previous case, where you have the sides of the houses, there's only two, but they're full mechitzas. Rabbi Yehuda says, full mechitzas, even though they're two, it's a rishul siyach, and the rabbanis say no. Even though they're full, but they're only two, it's not. Over here, you have only partial mechitzas, you only have posts. Rabbi Yehuda says, the traffic nullifies the mechitzas. The Chums say, even though they're only partial, and even though there's traffic, but there's four of them, it still retains, it has halach of rishul siyach. So the ton of the Brisa says, what we've identified as a Rishul Sarabim is a Rishul Sarabim, but the case of the Dumdum of the Post, which Rabbi Yehuda considers to be a Rishul Sarabim, that's not a Rishul Sarabim, that's a Rishul Sayyachin. So that's why it says this. That's why it says identifies as this. In fact, the Gemara of Amai Korle Gemura, why does it say complete? Now, in the previous case, we, we had a reason why we had to say complete, that it's a complete Rishus Hayachid. But over here, why does it say this is a Rishus Aram Gimura? Well, if we allow you to carry in it, of course, it's a, if we allow you to carry it, of course, it's a Rishus Hayachid. It's not a partial Rishus Harabim, it's a complete Rishus Hayachid. So why does it say in the Brisa, this is a Gimura? where it's complete as a Rishus Harab, as opposed to Rav Yehuda's case, which is not a Rishus Harabim. Well, if it's not Rishus Harabim, we allow you to carry over there, so 
Of course, it's not a Rishus HaRabim at all. So why does it say in the Brisa that what would we identify the highway as a Rishus HaRabim Gimur? As opposed to what? The Gemara says, It's really not necessary. I did the Tana Reisha Gemura, Tana Name Sefer Gemura. It's just for consistency. Since in the case of Rishus HaYochid, it says Gemura, and there it is necessary to say Gemura, as we mentioned. It says for consistency, it says Gemura here as well. Frank, the Gemara of Lech Nami Midbar. Well, the Tana is identifying what is a Rishus HaRabim. Why doesn't he also mention the desert? The Ha'atanya, Ezo Rishus HaRabim, Sarati Uplati, Gedoyalam, Mavu Samafuloshim, as our brides have mentioned, and it also adds on Vaha Midbar, and it adds on also the case of a desert. The way most Rishonim learn that it means the Rambam learned somewhat differently, but the way most Rishonim learn is that when Bnei Yisrael are in the midbar, you have Shishim Riboy in the midbar, then it's a public thoroughway, a thoroughfare. It's a public thoroughfare, and therefore it has a din of a Rishos Harabim. Bisman where it's not traveled, where it's not traveled, it's not considered to be Rishos Harabim. So the two Brises are identifying different times, different points in time. When there is traffic in the midbar when you have as for instance you had in the midrash shishim riboy so then it's a rishul sarabim but when you don't have the traffic it's not a rishul sarabim so tesis points out that it would seem from here that to, to be a rishul sarabim what constitutes a rishul sarabim is not only the dimensions of a highway of 16 amas but you also need shishim riboy you need six traffic of 600,000 to be a Rishos HaRabim. And this is, of course, a machloikis, a great dispute among the Rishonim, for a Rishos HaRabim is a Shishim Reba required or not required, and that goes into the whole discussion. Therefore, can you make an Eruv in an area which is a, a street, a major thoroughfare, can you make an Eruv? You can only make an Eruv, it's not a Rishos HaRabim, if it's not ever the rights of the Gerushul Sarabim, so this is really a part of the source of the dispute. Does it have to, does Rishul Sarabim have to have Shishim Riboy? Or do you say, even if it's a major street or thoroughfare or highway, and it has a width of 60, more than 16 amas, but if it's not traveled by 600,000, it's not a Rishul Sarabim, and therefore you can make an error. So the Tana said that therefore these are dimensions of Rishus Arabim, Rishus Ayochid, and therefore if somebody he carries, he takes out or brings in from the Rishus Arabim to the Rishus Ayochid, if he does a Bishagi, he is Chayv Achatas. If he does a Bemezid, there's without Hasra, there's Chorus. If there's Hasra, there's warning, there's also a Skilo. Well, of course, of course, he's chayav achatas. He does a b'shoyge. Once you tell me that he's chayav, it should be enough to say he's chayav, and I know automatically if he's chayav, he does a b'shoyge. He's chayav a korban chatas. Why does the Tana have to elaborate over here? Gemara says in a chanami, it's really not necessary to tell me the case of a shoyge that's chayav achatas, but b'meizid on his chorus for nisul the three chalei. It has to teach me that if he does it, it there is chorus or skila. Well, that's also poshut. If, if he does it, it, then the punishment for Shabbos is chorus and skila. Why does the Tana have to tell me this? More answers are Kamashim Lan Rav. wants to tell me that what Rav is coming to teach it because it is a Chiddush. I found a Megillah that was hidden away by Rav Chia. As Rashi uh, describes that it was at the time when Tarsh Shabal Peh was not written down. But if there was a special Chidush, it was permitted to write it down, and but it was hidden away, so that it should not be forgotten. If there was a Chidush, and they were afraid they were going to forget it, they were able to write it down, and they hid it away. Others learn that even if it was not a major Chidush, Teresh about Pa was permitted to write down privately. A person could write his private notes so that he could hazard and not forget. It just wasn't allowed to be disseminated to the public, to the rabbin. 
But upon him, there was this Megillus Zorim, and it was called Saba, was written, Ishi ben Yehuda Oimer, Avas Malach, Zemem Chal Sarachas. There are 39 Avas Malachas, Veinachai Velachas, and you're only, if you're doing all of them at one Hela, without being informed between the, the Avas Malachas that he was Oiver and Isser and that he's Chayev, if he does it with one Helam and one period of forgetting, he's only Chayev one. He's only one Chayev one Korban. How could you say that? Vatanan, the Mishnah says, in Klal Godol Avas Malachas, Mem Chalser Achas, Ir Chayev Mem Chalser Achas, Vavin Ba Minyan Olam What is the Minyan for? Why does the Tana have to tell me the number, 39? Just list the, the Avas. If he's He's Chayav, he's Arei, he's Chayresh, etc. Why does it have to tell me the number? I can count the number. So, He's coming to teach you the number, to teach you the number of Chatois that a person could be Chayav. If he does all of his Malachis without being informed between them that he was Chayav, he would be Chayav 39 Korbonis, 39 Chatois. So how can you tell me that Isi ben Yehuda, he said that you're only Chayav 1? Rather, what it's coming to say is, what he's coming to say is that there's one that you are enochai val achasman. There's one you're not chai for. And it's coming to teach me that this is, Hoitso is not one of the ones that are under suffix. Hoitso is not one that is in question. So you are high the ton over here wants to teach me that there's no question there's no question as far as height saw you are high of you are high for height saw and you're high for the maze you're high for skila for height saw Omar Mar Abel Yamu Bikavia Stav Nisak Karmelis Ainu Loi Kershusa Yachid Loi Kershusa Rabbit So the Tana says is that the Yam and the Bika the, you have the sea, or you have an open area with fields, the estavnes, and the, the platform, the bench of the area, and the caramelists are not kirshusi yachim, la kirshusi rabim. Frecting more abika, ain't a loy kirshusi yachim, la kirshusi rabim, is an open area of fields, is not considered like kirshusi yachim, la kirshusi rabim. Vahatanan, ha bika bi maisachama, the bika in the summertime where it's dry. Rishus HaYachid L'Shabbos is considered a Rishus HaYachid for Shabbos. People generally don't walk in that area. And they, they could from time to time, it's a dry area, uh, but it generally people don't walk there. It's a Rishus HaYachid for Shabbos. Rishus HaRabim L'Tumah. But as far as Tuma goes, since from time to time people do walk there, it's not considered to be a secluded area. And we learn out from sight that a Suffolk Tuma, that a Suffolk Tuma in a Rishus HaRabim is taught, and a Rishus HaYachid is taught. So in the summertime, it's not considered to be a secluded area, because from time to time people do go there. So therefore, if there's a Suffolk Tuma, if a person is a Suffolk, if he came into contact with the Sheretz, a dead Sheretz, it's considered a Rishus HaRabim, and he's taught. The Maisek Shamim, when the area over there it's planted in the rainy seasons, people don't walk on the fields over there. Rishus Yachid, Lakan Lakan, it's considered Rishus Yachid, both for Shabbos and for Tuma. Al Kolponim, you see that the Bika is considered a Rishus Yachid. Artana says it's not a Rishus Yachid, nor a Rishus Arabim. Amar Ula, Loelam Carmelis Havian, is considered a Carmelis. But my Karle Rishus Yachid Lafishain Rishus Arabim. Really, it's considered a Karmelis. Why is it considered? Why does the Tan over here say that it's a because of Rishus Yachid? It just means, as, as opposed to Rishus Arabim, it's not a Rishus Arabim. But really, it's not really a Rishus Yachid either. It's just not a Rishus Arabim. It's really a Karmelis. Ravashi will have another terrace with Bashasem. We'll see you on the next moment.